Hello everyone, is it Thursday? We are on the 14th of April. This is your host, The Cowboy, and the chart of the day for YouTube. Let's take a look and jump and take a look at Twitter. Twitter has been in the news today, especially with the news that possibly Elon Musk wants to um, buy this company. I think he made a bid of it for like 50, 420 or something like that. And um, I thought it would be a good idea to take a look at the chart and see what the charts are telling us. And... Uh, you know what's the what's the likelihood of this thing moving higher or lower or whatnot? So it's a it's a it's a little bit of a messy count. Twitter has not been able to rally uh, since it kind of went uh, public here in January um, 2014 or just below that, maybe at the end of 2013. So we've made lows here towards. Um, you know, this kind of 13 bucks and then it rally all the way up here to 82, then, you know, got cut uh, more than half again. So it's pretty much all over the place. But if I am uh, taking a look at the structures in here, guys, I wanted to, to see what we can identify and then I'm going to do a live counting in here to, to see what, what comes off it. So I'm noticing a couple of impulses. So this is a pretty good impulse out of here. Uh, and then I'm noticing another impulse back in here. Then we have a bunch of corrections, uh, things that kind of overlap, go up and down. And, um, you know, there's a couple of ways to kind of go about this. I'm not sure which one is the best one. I'll, I'll I will, uh, try to, you know, get arguments, uh, pro and contra for both of them. Um, and, and we'll see which one you like it, you know, uh, let me know in the comments and, and, um, you know, come in the, in the room, in the public room up there on Telegram and show me your accounts on Twitter if you want, or, or, uh, you know, talk to me via, um, you know, via Twitter, <laughs> right? Just come in and, and see me on Twitter and we can discuss this further. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like to this channel. Just, uh, keep that in mind, uh, you know, take a little bit of a pause and, and press that like button, notification bell and all that. Uh, I appreciate you being here. So. Let's take a look at the count. I think what I'm going to do, so I have, I have a couple of ways to kind of go about this. And uh, first of all, I'm going to take my impulsive count and um, I'm going to go and, and, and measure this out and just kind of start at these lows. So I'm looking for whatever this was, doesn't matter, maybe just a large ABC. And then we'll go up here in the first impulse from the low. So let's just consider that wave one. Then you have another ABC down for a second wave, pretty deep pullback, almost 80%. And then, um, you know, we're noticing in here another impulse higher. So I can go in a one, two, three, four, and five. So that should be, let's say, a wave three in there. And then, you know, if we do, let's say, a wave four and a wave five in here, then this wave five kind of has to be truncated uh, below this wave three. Uh, I'm going to go inside the structure as well, and I'm going to go here because this is a wave one. So let's do a flat in two, then up in three in here. Uh, let's do a four and a five. So I think this is, I think this is a pretty clean move, if you ask me. Just kind of go one, two, three, four, and five. That's the larger, you know, third of a third there. So that's, to me, that's, that's, that goes, you know, without question that that's, that's a third wave. Um, and then this fourth wave, let's see, doesn't come in the territory of the wave one. We're not getting in there. So you can see that's the wave one top. That's the fourth wave low. And then you're pushing out of there in this fifth wave. Now, uh, you know, for that to be through, uh, um, you know, you have to have, so this is a truncated fifth. And uh, let's see here. So one, two, three, four, five. So that would make now this a wave, let's say a wave one. Um, or a wave A, right? So we can look at it both ways. So if we go in a wave one, that means that we got to start again from here and go one, two, three, four, and five. So that's a wave one. That's a wave two pullback. And then, you know, you can't really make a three and a four out of here. So you would have to go much larger here in three, four, and five. Uh, and I'm going to change the subdivisions here, go from a cycle on the degree go to a primary and then this automatically kind of gets changed. So this would be kind of our one, two scenario. And then this has got to be maybe another one, two to kind of fit inside this larger third wave. So we would go on another impulse and you just go wave one and then big ABC here for the second, three, four and five. And we would kind of target that top. This will become an intermediate again. And it will allow for this to kind of travel like that, maybe do a fourth and a fifth. I mean, I'm not exact here on the projections, but 
Um, I mean, this would mean that Twitter would actually have to to climb much, much higher over the next, I don't know, uh, four or five years in here and go towards $200 a share. I mean, um, that's kind of under this scenario where you go in this in a one, two, one, two. Uh, the other thing that I kind of want to show you in here would be that this is, uh, um, you know, let's just kind of connect these lows in here, go in a, in a, you know, in a channel. So this would be the bottom section of the channel. Then we go up here and we go and we see that these lines, you know, kind of fit almost perfectly in here in terms of kind of the way this looks. So you go something like that. I mean, you have a little bit of an overshoot down here. Uh, but I, you know, the idea is that the price are kind of contained inside this channel. Now, if I go in a second wave pullback in here, that is, uh, you know, towards the 618. So a pretty decent pullback uh, for, for a second wave. And then let's check out this other second wave all too. So that's another 618 in there. And, and, um, you know, this, you know, it doesn't make sense. I mean, uh, it kind of does. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, the only thing here, a little uglier, is this truncated fifth, but it's the only way where you can kind of keep this. And even if you want to do this, a triangle right in there um, and do something like this. So this is, let's say, the triangle right in there. You know, so you go down in A, up in B, so A, B, C, D, and E, and then you go in a one, two, three, small four, and up in five for the fifth wave, and you fail uh, because this was a pretty strong rise, and then this almost took it. Uh, it kind of failed to do so, and then you, you sharply drop in a three-wave setback uh, for the 618. So again, one, two, three, four, five, four, one, down in two, and then, you know, you're going back in another one and another two. Now, you can't really make, let's say this is a wave one, a wave two, a wave three, a wave four, uh, and a wave five, because uh, you would have to have some kind of a leading diagonal, and I don't think I'm ready to, uh, you know, to kind of look at that, especially with this truncated uh, move in here. That's, that's, um, that would be, you know, sort of ugly in my view for a leading. Uh, so let's just kind of stay with this for now, and I'll show you a different count that I was thinking about. And kind of see how that looks now you know this this second wave in here looks uh, um you know pretty deep i mean it, it's probably a flat formation because i'm getting an abc in here followed by an x wave uh, to the prior b and then a more of an impulse so a b and then up in c um you know pretty messy let's just do some calculations there and kind of see how that looks in terms of a correction so let's go down in a up in b and then down in c and let's do c versus a uh, 1618 so that's fine it's not uh it's not as crazy as i thought it was going to be but every time you have this you're looking at this more of a third way because you're at about a 100 and see how markets work i mean look at this fib ratio so 1618 618 618 i mean it's just beautiful um, but you can't really make a third wave out of this thing because already uh, this is in the territory of the wave one. So if you would go here in a one, two, three, this would have to be a four and you're already penetrating that. And I'm, I doubt you're going to get a big triangle in here uh, and then another push lower. Um, you never know, but I, I don't think that's the case. I think this move kind of completed uh, up here at these lows and, you know, we're probably going to start to grind higher here, maybe do another pullback and then, you know, kind of see what happens from here. This looks like a pretty good impulse up. And then, you know, I mean, the news just kind of came on today and, uh, you know, maybe the markets will just kind of punish, you know, the excited people getting up into those news and we'll, we'll do a little bit of a pullback in here before, let's say, another rally begins into next year or something. Uh, but that's kind of where I'm at on this count. And now let me show you something else. And I'm going to use maybe a different... Um, I'm going to go here to an alternate. I'm going to save this up so we can have it. Go here to an alternate count. Start with a fresh chart and go again to this kind of one week uh, time frame. And, and something else that catches my mind is so I'm looking at these two corrections. This one here and this one here and then an impulse. Now this move out of here, it's bigger than this. And, you know, this is small. So you might know where I'm going with this. And this is going to be a leading diagonal. So I'm going to go in here uh, in a wave one a wave two, a wave three, a wave four, and a wave five. And I'm going to put the lines in here so you can kind of see what I mean. And then this fifth wave, let's just measure it up. It would be 114% 
it's right there so in, a, in an expanding leading diagonal wave 5 has to be longer than 3 wave 3 has to be longer than 1 so you can see in here wave 3 is clearly longer than uh, wave 5 is clearly longer than 3 and 3 it's obviously longer than wave 1 so I'm going to delete that uh, okay that's the other one in there let's just kind of get rid of this guy 5 versus 3. Um, now we're having the zigzag in here, so this is impulses in each leg of the leading diagonal. So impulse in 1, zigzag in 2, um, impulse in 1, um, more of a complex correction, a double zigzag in a way 4, so you're coming A, B, C, X, A, B, C. So this is going to be something like that. Decompose this as a combination. So that would kind of go back there, A, B, C, and then up in X, um, and then another A, B, C lower for Y. Wave 4 must subdivide into a zigzag. They don't like that. So uh, I got to check the rules. I think uh, you can have a double zigzag as well, but I might be wrong. So I got to double check myself on that. So let's just go with an A, B, C if they don't like that. But how are you going to count that? Because you can't really do it. You don't have a C wave in here, right? So maybe this is why uh, the other count is a little bit better. You can't really go in an A, B, and C because that's clearly not a C wave. It's a three-wave setback. Um, so maybe I'm just wrong here in, a, in, a, in the leading diagonal. Um, thought process um, you know because it's clearly maybe better interpreted as a WXY rather than an ABC so and then you're getting a fifth wave in there so that's a nice impulse um, and that would kind of qualify for the wave one of the lows and this would be something like this in here so you go up in an impulse so you go in a wave one and then you would come here in a wave two and then you're beginning three four and five let me revert that and I'm going to change that degree because I don't like the decrease degree there and then this will still kind of push the stock you know uh, much much higher to the upside now obviously this wave 2 can continue to kind of move sideways I keep grabbing it the wrong way so it can kind of go like that still and let's say that ABC maybe you're getting an X in here and then another ABC and it will look something like that combination so let's go like that and then you do an X and then you know and you still kind of correct over the next few years and, and still Twitter won't go anywhere you know uh, but if you're starting to break above these levels again let's say you know right back above there above 71 uh, then you know it's likely this is finished and you're going to push higher that would be my clue that this correction kind of finished up for right now you're still kind of vulnerable here right so take it you know take it between these two counts uh, the other one um, I mean it and, and you can kind of go in a lot of different ways. You can go, let's say, maybe an A, B, C in here for a wave, um, you know, for a wave W, and then you have a big X wave, and then you go another A, B, C, and you push higher, right? But the idea is not necessarily that, uh, um, you know, you're going to go uh, in some kind of an impulse. The idea is that you're going to make new highs and push above these uh, $80 highs, even if you do it in a, you know, in, in a, in a corrective type price section and then Twitter turns back for some reason and that's kind of how that would look let me show you really really quickly and I, and I, I don't mean to confuse you I'm just kind of showing you the direction um, based on kind of how this looks so uh, here it is I'm gonna go in a combination so let's go here so you go ABC for a W here then you go in an X and then you go in another and you do a Y wave let me increase this uh, let's go to a larger degree in here let's go to a minor degree and then you would go this one would be your ABC in a in a in a correction type so that's an A that's a B and then up in C you know so and then you know if you put a channel uh, show the channel in there I mean they're not doing it really perfect but you know you get the idea because they're kind of going right here at the low but it would be abc let's say an x and then another abc and then can still uh, kind of make this market travel higher and it could be just a choppy fast in twitter uh you know for a long time you could continue to kind of go like this but you know let's just assume that this company will will get its stuff together uh for the lack of a better term and um you know will start to maybe trend or or um, you know maybe somebody else buys it a different a larger company i'm not sure and actually they start to monetize it and twitter becomes a you know stronger better communication company whatever um you know and under those criteria 
you would have to have you know some kind of a trending market either either from a leading diagonal perspective or from uh, this perspective in a one two one two uh, so how does this help you you know how can you trade this well if you believe that discount is the one that kind of looks a little bit better um you know i kind of tend to prefer it uh it's it's an ultra bullish count i know but yeah you can go one two one two and then uh you know if you can get maybe a little bit of a pullback in here uh and then start to trend higher then you might want to think about you know uh, getting on the train for a push up higher here maybe above 80 to 90 dollars uh, but if you're coming below this you know 34 again if something happens and this market um you know let's say falls apart and does something like this then things are you know starting to look a little bit uglier and i don't really want to be part of it so um you know that's kind of where i'm at um i hope this helped let me know what you think um based on these uh on, on my interpretations here uh leave the comments below you know uh, subscribe to the channel come and visit me in the pro room this is going to be a longer weekend in here the markets are opening back i think on monday so tomorrow i think they're closed and um just the futures might be open uh but uh you know, we had the big webinar today in the pro room, about two hours. We went through a lot of stuff in there. So if you want to come take a trial for whatever, you can see the webinar and our discussions. I went, um, you know, to a lot of stuff in the, in the macro uh, world as well. And we also looked at a bunch of coins and altcoins there. So come and visit us in the pro room, see what you think. And uh, I'll talk to you a bit later. Thanks for watching and being here as always. I appreciate you. Bye-bye.